If you're an M4 Pro Mac Mini user and you're running into space issues and considering doing something like using a home drive method, which takes all of your apps, documents, except for the system data, and puts it on an external SSD, making this essentially a replacement for your main drive, today's video is for you because I'm going to talk about what is the best solution to use for your home drive if you're an M4 Pro Mac Mini user. Now, I only really recommend this method if you're using a desktop because using the home method means you're going to have a SSD drive hooked up to your machine at all times. Now, this isn't the same as the boot drive method. You are just keeping your applications, your documents, and your user data on here, but your system data stays on your computer, which is why a lot of users opt for this method, because you get the full speeds of using an SSD as your internal SSD without the problems. For instance, if you unplug this, you can still access your computer per se, you just can't access the user account that is using this as a main drive, so it's good to have you know an extra account as a backup, but it's not the same as a boot drive, because if you use this is a boot drive if it's not plugged in you're not going to be able to boot your machine at all now I did a whole video showing you how to set up your Mac for the home drive method I just want to talk about why this specific drive is the best one to use with the M4 Pro Mac mini in today's video since I've already shown you how to do it before so make sure you check the link in the description below this may look a little familiar this is the Express 1 M2 from OWC however it's not the same one I've been talking about for the past year or so this is the original one that I've been talking about, the 40 gigabit drive that has a 3000 megabytes per second speed. Now for the regular Mac minis, this is perfect because it's Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4, and it gets the full Thunderbolt and USB 4 speeds out of the Mac mini, matching the internal drive at 3000 megabytes per second. But this doesn't quite cut it for M4 Pro because the M4 Pro internal drive of the M4 Pro Mac Mini is around 6,000 megabytes per second. Well, now with this brand new version from OWC, here is their 80 gigabit version, and this does over 6,000 megabytes per second, meaning that it is not only the best SSD for the M4 Pro Mac Mini, but it is really the only option to use as your home drive because when using one of these as your home drive, this SSD is being used all the time, which means it's going to get hot and the thermals are really important. Well, OWC designed these 1M2 drives as the entire enclosure is one huge heat sink, so you'll never run into issues such as overheating, which is a huge deal if you're using this as your home drive, because if the drive overheats, you're not gonna be able to access your data until it cools down. So the 6,000 megabytes per second speed out of this 1M2 new version is pretty much the main reason why I would not only recommend using it as a home drive, but if you need an SSD for your machine that's really any modern M4 Pro level machine, because most of the machines that run M4 Pro, M4 Max, uh, M4 Ultra, they're all Thunderbolt 5. And you need Thunderbolt 5 on Apple systems to be able to use the data off of this enclosure. Now this enclosure is technically USB 4, but USB 4 has a higher data spec than Thunderbolt 4. So that's why on Apple machines, you do need to be running Thunderbolt 5. I'm gonna do a comparison video of the 80 gigabit version against this 60 gigabit version here because although they look similar, they're not the exact same size. And then the USB placement's a little bit different here, but for certain users, the 40 gigabit is going to make a lot more sense because of its functionality and price. And for other users, the 80 gigabit is going to make more sense. It's more expensive, but it is twice the speed. So I'll be doing a comparison and a full review of this in the future. So make sure to stay tuned. But I wanted to talk about this drive uh, because it is really the best option right now if you're running a pro level desktop. If you're running a Mac Studio, this may be a really great option as well, but I think a lot of M4 Pro Mac Mini users are gonna be looking into this just because there's been such great deals on the M4 Pro Mac Mini over the past six months. It still can be limiting at 512 gigabytes, and a lot of users don't wanna open up their machine. I totally get it. This is the best solution if you need to have as much data as possible. I put two terabytes in here and it's been fine for me. You can get the enclosure by itself for around 220 bucks. And then if you do that, you're going to have to choose your own NVMe drives. I'll put the ones I recommend in the description below. If you don't wanna worry about getting the right NVMe drive and you wanna get the max speeds of this out of the box, you're gonna have to get the pre-configured ones that 
they are pricier. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you here, but they are guaranteed to work. So I'll leave a link to everything in the description below, and I'll be doing more content on these drives because OWC, although they may not be the most beautiful looking drives, they do make the best drives for Apple users, especially if you're editing video, doing whatever. The, the way that the transfer speeds work, the way that the performance is with the overheating, they made these things with creators, filmmakers in mind. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with more videos like this on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.